Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this week we have a question from Yusuka in Japan, and Yusuka asks, can you please explain how to shoot in manual mode? Well, Yusuka, we can answer that for you. And I'm really surprised. We've done so much on metering and understanding how the camera uh, looks at light and exposure compensation. We've never done an episode to answer the question how to shoot on manual mode. And so we're going to dive in. I'm going to show you how to do that on this Nikon. And we also have a Canon, so I can show you how it works on both. Now, for those of you who haven't uh, seen some of our past episodes, you might want to do a little homework if metering is new to you. In fact, the one thing you need to understand is how the exposure triangle works. And you can see all about that in Digital Photography 101, episode 16, where we talk about how the aperture, shutter, and ISO work together to give you a correct exposure. And then we actually talk about understanding uh, how your camera meters in episode 25 and 26. So you might want to check those out if metering is new to you. And then uh, also understanding stops, we covered in episode 24. And finally, I did this uh, interesting thing with the spreadsheet uh, on episode 47 to help you understand your camera settings. So those are some episodes you may want to watch if you're new to digital photography one-on-one -on -one or new to shooting with the DSLR. And that will help you understand what we're talking about today. Now what I've done is I've set up a, a Nikon D3S and I'm going to turn on live view. I've got this hooked up to this HDMI cable that's going to our TV here and you're actually seeing what is in the uh, camera. So this is live. You can see that I'm zooming in and out. Put my hand in front of that. So this is uh, the real deal. We're doing this live and I'll show you how to adjust your camera so that you can shoot in full manual mode. Now, one of the things that uh, you might experience is a little bit of disappointment at how easy this actually is. So uh, for a lot of people that go from shooting in uh, some of the auto modes to full manual mode, the first time they understand it, they go, I can't believe it's that easy. And it really is pretty darn simple. So what you need to do is first you have to choose what's the most important thing. Do you want to control depth of field or do you want to control motion? So if you want to control depth of field, you have to uh, choose which aperture value to shoot. And so I'm just going to pull some numbers out of the air and choose an aperture value. And then we'll do it the opposite way where I'm going to say I want to control motion and then I'll have to choose a shutter speed and that will be my main priority. Again, to understand that, check out episode 47 where I go into a lot more detail on choosing one of those two things. And then we'll also talk about in this episode how to uh, figure out when to change your ISO. So again, it's the exposure triangle, the aperture, the shutter, and the ISO. So let's get started. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my camera and I'm just going to pick an aperture value out of the air. I'm going to say I want to shoot this at let's say 6.3. Okay, I'm just choosing something uh, out of the air. So I might have chosen maybe 2.8 because I wanted a shallow depth of field or 22 because I wanted an extreme depth of sharpness. Um, so I could have chosen one of those, but I'm really concerned about the aperture in this exposure. And so I want to shoot at 6.3. Now what I've done is when I do that, on my meter in my camera, I have a, a little guide that tells me if I'm overexposed or underexposed. And you can see that on the left-hand side of this screen, there's that little meter that says plus and minus, and then there's a zero right in the middle. And the key is we want to show, uh, we want to have these lines that are showing uh, negative. We want those to go away and we want it to align right with the zero. And when we have that set, well, we know that we have a correct exposure and we can shoot. So we have our aperture value at 6.3. That's what we want to use. And so we've locked that in. We don't want to change that. So what we need to do is we need to change our shutter speed so that we have the right amount of light. Now, the thing is right now we're looking and it says that we are underexposed. It has a negative value. So it's pointing down to the negative. So what we need to do is we need to slow down our shutter speed and that's going to let in more light and so we'll get a proper exposure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to start slowing down my shutter speed. And you see as I'm doing that, those lines get smaller and smaller until finally that is at zero. And now I have a proper exposure and everything's good. In fact, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we have this. There we go. So I'll change that. So there we go. Perfect. So now it's right at zero. And if I took a picture, we would have a proper exposure. 
Now that's uh, pretty simple. So let's say that I want to shoot at, again, I'm going to pick a number out of the air. I really care about uh, the shutter speed. So I want to shoot at a shutter speed of 200th of a second. So what I'll do is I'll go in here and I'm just going to uh, roll this till I see it at 200th of a second. There we go. Now we're at 200th of a second and you can see that that says I'm way underexposed. And so what I'll do is I need to open up the aperture to let in more light. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go in here and open this up, open this up, and I'm at 2.8, and we have a problem. Because at 2.8, which is wide, that's as wide as the aperture will go, our camera is still saying, well, we don't have enough light. Well, I know I want to shoot at 200th of a second, so what can I do? Well, the answer is pretty simple. I have one more leg of the exposure triangle, and that is ISO. So I can increase my ISO to make my camera more sensitive to light, and then I can get that meter to go to zero, and I can take my shot. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to change my ISO. So I'm going to change it up to about 800 here, and I'll take a look. Look at that. We're not quite there. It looks like we're just over two stops underexposed. Again, if you're new to stops, you can look at episode 24 for an explanation of that. So on our meter there, we're about two stops, two and uh, three-quarter stops underexposed. So I'm going to go to 16 and even up to 32, and we're just about there. I'm going to increase that by another third stop, and look at that. Now we're at zero. So by choosing my aperture and uh, my shutter speed and my aperture value, if I'm underexposed, I can just increase my ISO until I'm at zero, and now I have a proper exposure. So this meter just tells me what I need to do, either let in more light by opening the aperture or slowing down the shutter, or by telling my camera to be more sensitive to light by increasing the uh, ISO or decreasing the ISO. So there you have it. What we're going to do now is I'm going to switch. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm going to put a Canon on here to show you it's the exact same thing. The meter looks a little bit different, but it behaves the exact same way. So I'm going to uh, unplug this and I'll switch these cameras out. And now I have a Canon 7D. What I'll do here is really quickly, I'm going to uh, get this all lined up here before I put it on live view. Okay. So now that looks good. So I'm going to plug this into my HDMI cable, enable my live view here, and that will pop up. So there we go. We have our nice ugly picture. And uh, this is a little bit different. The meter isn't on the side. It's on the bottom in live view. Now, when you're doing this in your camera, if you're not using live view, you'll actually see that meter through the eyepiece. I didn't make that clear earlier, but that's where you'd be looking at it. So you don't actually have to look at live view. You can just look through the lens and you'll see this meter. And so you don't even have to take your eye off the lens to actually dial in your settings. So for this, let's say that I want to shoot at a uh, shutter speed of 100. And that's the most important thing. And then we'll figure out what uh, aperture value to use. So what I'll do is I'll go in here and I'm going to change my shutter speed till it says 100. And when I do that, I can see that I am underexposed by a little over two stops, almost three stops. So I'm going to, oh, I can't open up my aperture because it's at 2.8 and that's as wide as this aperture goes. So just like we did before, we need to increase the ISO. So what I'll do is I'll push my ISO setting. And then when I do that, I can just go in here and choose a different ISO. I'll choose 800. Then we'll go back. That looks good. And now still we're a little bit underexposed, so I need to increase my ISO just a little bit more. So I'll go up. That looks good. And there we are. Instead of a zero, this guy has this little arrow, which is right in the center. And once I have that lined up, then I'm good to go. Now watch this. I can start playing with settings. Let's say, you know what? I don't want to shoot at 100. I'll go to 50 or even 40. Well, now we're overexposed, and I can just take my aperture. I can close it down until it hits 4.5, and you can see that meter goes to zero. And as long as that's at zero, our exposure is going to be correct most of the time. Sometimes it's not exactly correct, and so you can look at episode 25 and 26, where we talk all about metering and exposure compensation to understand what all that means. Now, the last thing that we want to talk about with shooting in manual mode is how do you do exposure compensation because a lot of people ask that question. Well, it's really simple. Let's say that we wanted to do an exposure compensation where we're overcompensating by a stop. Well, all I have to do is if uh, the uh, shutter speed is the thing that's the most important thing here, I can just go in here and say, you know what? I'm going to roll my, sorry, roll my um, 
aperture value to 3.2. And you can see that it says that I'm overexposed by a stop, which is the exact same thing as doing exposure compensation by one stop over. It works the same way. Well, there you have it. It's very, very simple to shoot in full manual mode. All you do is choose either the aperture value and dial in your ISO and shutter to get it where your exposure is set to zero or right on this uh, middle line, or you choose your shutter speed and you dial in your aperture value and ISO. Either way, you'll get to that middle point and you can shoot. So try this out, do a lot of practice, and you'll be well on your way to shooting in manual mode full time. Well, thanks for joining me this week. Remember, if you have a question about photography or photography-related gear, you can send those questions to me at askmark at adorama.com. Thanks again. I'll see you next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.